Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Talent Finders would like to welcome CEO and founder, published biomedical scientist, orthopedic specialist, and keynote speaker, Dr. Marion Zhang. So welcome, Marion. Hi, Karen. It is a pleasure to be here with you and your audience. Isn't it going to be a nice conversation? Yes. So Marion, I'd like to congratulate you on all your achievements. So can you share with us how your entrepreneurial journey started? Yes, you know, I've kind of always had that thread of entrepreneurialism in my in my blood. Um, noticed at age nine and then as I kept going, but really the important aspects of it was post combination of my my university degrees and my experience as an orthopedic specialist and then my engineering type background i'm not an engineer myself but my family members my dad i grew up in engineering <clears throat> excuse me so i tend to look at problems and solutions and a different perspective so when i worked with orthopedic surgeons neurosurgeons and their patients in the recovery from contractures post surgery post injury i recognized that there really was a very obvious lack of tools that people could use on their own to yes. recover on their own yes. and so um and then when i discovered my own i had a, a knee injury and i discovered my own ability to recover within three weeks using my techniques um that are inspired by nature actually as we talk further you'll discover the shape the design of the products is a very interesting attribute to the forest um, and but there's a natural inclination for the body to use its mobility capacity, its flexibility, its recovery from injury, if you just give it the proper tools <laughs> and, then, and like yes. a fulcrum around which movement can occur. So I set out to design these. I did. I patented and uh, promoted. And now the lead product is is really on fire, followed closely by the second. But they're um, proving to be very valuable and yes. innovations. And so commercial translation is is underway. That's amazing. So you're incredibly talented and highly qualified Thank as you. the CEO <laughs> and founder of Zani's health and fitness equipment. You hold a PhD in clinical pathology and are a published biomedical scientist with degrees in genetics and orthopedic physical therapy. So having gained so many qualifications, when did you decide to embark on your entrepreneurial journey? And what was the motivation to go on your own using all your skills and qualifications? Oh, yes. Thanks for asking. Um, it really was the realization that is strong when you can have an idea and you realize oh this can be done and this is worthwhile to the world um, you have to recognize the messages that the world will give you as you test the waters and if those are positive messages you should go forth and you make it happen in the ways that you can um, and what motivates is the significant uh positive attributes from the world for instance i had a few um going into a competition in M massachusetts near boston and our product won audience choice award at mass innovation nights that was a motivator when i was still considering should i be doing other things with my career experience or should i pursue this that is brewing and developing and i have patented and need to promote and that was a moment of you, the world saying yeah go for it <laughs> you have to have the uh funding too to be able to do it and i um have made some smart investments and i was able to support self support that's a critical piece of it but yeah, absolutely, also, especially as a female founder, because I mean, yeah. it's not easy to raise funds if you don't have the ability to to do that. It, on yes. your own. It's a nice integration of being female founder of, yes, you're left behind in raising funds. But then we also have this incredible talent to do things more lean and women entrepreneurs are known to be three times more lean in their expenditure than male counterparts. And so, um, although being offered 
just 8% of the funding opportunities, 92% goes to the mill. But that is changing quickly, quickly. And it also um, enables us to keep going with our lean, savvy smarts. And the things that I did to achieve just to be able to promote the products and keep on going, it's, it's quite an incredible journey too, the way that we have an ability to piece it together. You think you might be flat out, and no, something falls in place the next day and whoosh, here you go again. It might be as simple as, oh, I don't know, a Valentine's gift from a parent and maybe there's a little money in there. <laughs> or perhaps it is um, you've saved on the expenditures and you've able, been able to put toward the provisional patent to get you going. That's yeah, only 540 exactly. bucks, 540 bucks. You can, we, you know, so, um, and then it gets bigger and more expensive, of course. Yes. But it's, um, it's interesting that we women are very good at bootstrapping. <laughs> oh, big time. Yeah. I totally relate to that myself. So you are the investor of Ankle Stones, an innovative all-in-one orthopedic device that improves foot and ankle flexibility mobility and health and also have developed a patented product bedrock and willow works two other functional mobility fitness products can you share with us how you managed to achieve so much and still try to balance and manage family life oh yes a, a multiple juggling act but it almost circles around and supports itself in a way if you believe in it strongly if you have the energy first thing i would say always exercise always run do something that gives you that relief time because yes. you're right uh, i raised four children beautiful young adults now a daughter and three sons and we admire each other so much and are such good friends that took some skill, the art of raising boys to men. I tell you, that didn't yes. alone has some stories. But that energy, having to keep going for them, provides you more stamina and strength. And also, you find a way to multitask. And I also started to use my kids as assets. So they, their strengths fed in, in a way. My spokesmodel, Julia, um, my engineering son, who contributes, my videography son who contributes, my business savvy son who contributes. So in a way, it all starts to support itself. Yes. You never have to divide and separate. They're just all conducive in strength to the self. And as you gain in, in abilities, your children believe in you more or your family. So it starts to balance itself. There's always that scary game of balancing finances. Yes. Um, but as we mentioned, you just find the ways to strap it together and you make do and you do it. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to talk about the product development and what was it like for you as it is a highly scientific and complex process. So can you share with us more about that and the process of patenting and what that was like? And where do you begin in such a highly competitive and very financially complex industry? So can you share with us more about this? And how did you bootstrap or fund it yourself? Which you did touch on briefly earlier, but if you could sort of yes. elaborate. Yes. Well, just to start in with how do you, you bootstrap as you patent, definitely bootstrap is a mentality that can be fun. And it can give you that confidence if you have it and that knowledge, that idea, you mm. can sit down pen to paper and design it. Find yourself a patent lawyer, file it for $540, grab that one year of protection. Mm. And then you do have to face the music that there's gonna be more costs. And yes, my investment in my three patents for products is significant, but I also justify it well in that, uh, equivalent to a university degree, not even that much, um, a third of a university degree. And I'm going to invest in myself. Darn, darn right, I'm going to. So it's yeah. a, it was easy to justify that. 
and knowing that only 8% of patents are owned by women, um, this was a brave move in a way. Mm -hmm. But I found actually a team of fantastic women lawyers in New York City helped me. I have another lawyer in Boston, fantastic. And it, it was frightening sometimes to open up a patent lawyer bill. But yeah, because it's, it's a lot of money. <laughs> it is. And that was part of the piecemeal. Yes. And I would set it aside. And here's some tricks that allow you to do it. If you have good credit status, use it. Yes. I did. You know, yeah. I had an impeccable status. And it allows you to borrow some money for a while and be able to pay things for things with other people's money. Do it. Uh, I had the support of friends and family. That's the next step. In order mm -hmm. to maintain 100% ownership of your company, especially being a woman owned 100%, um, friends and family are very important. My father and a couple of friends helped me to strap through the way and to be able to support the business entity as I needed to. Yes. And then I became kind of climbing up la levels that allowed me to earn the money, um, doing some speaking engagements at Harvard and Yale. And oh, different. that must have been something. Oh, yeah, but small enough to link me to the next goal. And it really is one step at a time. And don't get flustered over the money. Don't let, um, you know, all of the guilt that we would feel, oh, you know, I must not do this because society says this is not right. Be more self-fulfilling, more uh, selfish. Women, yes. be more, you know, and put yourself out there. The discovery is yours to take. You yes. have to just take it. Yeah, absolutely. So mm. what would you say some of the biggest lessons have been within your career? Oh, um, basically that it is a one step, tiny step, multiple mm. step process, <laughs> 10 year success, <laughs> you know, it takes 10 years or an overnight success rather it takes 10 years. And, um, those steps are all doable. If you are fearful, if you hesitate, you just have to tell yourself in whatever way you can, whether it's the positive annotations that feed into your mind that you must have of course you must stay positive and sometimes you can trick yourself and just say there is no choice but to do this whether it's a phone call or to go to new york to promote your product that you've invented and say hey world look at this and decide to make the, the trip and do that many times no choice but to do it i am going to do this and yeah. it's, it's almost this warrior status and um and then it you suddenly just start doing it <laughs> and it's it, you getting into the uncomfortable and that becomes a good place to stay and you push 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 and anything you think of this the steps will fall into place anything you're achieving to execute the next logical step reveals itself yes okay. absolutely mm. so I obviously want to talk around leadership or the lack of leadership from both an entrepreneurial and global perspective. So what do you believe makes your leadership style different? And what do you believe needs to change the current narrative, both from an entrepreneurial and global perspective? Oh, yeah, well, the um, there is some gender gaps, that, absolutely. But I have sensed in the last six, seven years, I've been working um, in this entrepreneurial realm, self-employed, and um, bringing ankle stone the last two years in particular. But I find that if you just stake your claims with a fearless pride, we can open up to new empowerment. And I'm feeling such a strong movement for women. You are, I'm sure the world is feeling that, um, especially in this area of business. And um, I feel the world's changing. Our daughter's daughters will be in more leadership roles, but it's up to us to bridge them there. And so um, I feel an obligation to go forth with as much um, integrity and talent and perseverance and tenacity and intellect and um, maybe some goodness to the world that I can possibly do. And that then breaks through for the next and the next. And um, we're on our way to do some improvements in the world, I think. Um, 
definitely. Um, women have to find that the discomfort is temporary and to push ourselves. Yeah, and absolutely. That, that push is, is a nice thing. It starts to feel good, <laughs> you know, because the rewards are there and the cumulative knowledge is there and the confidence and the empowerment and the I can do this. Um, and it changes, it shifts our world a little bit. Even though you may have pushback, you will have pushback. Societal pushbacks are different people, but if you believe in something and want to pursue it, just just execute with your head down focused and turning out tuning out that negative that which hits us daily or um in our from our own minds perhaps yeah. and um people have to learn how to stay in this positive mode that i'm talking about and we're we're trying to exemplify and it's hard to stay up there but you better you can fall and then you better get back up again so that you're basically your 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 set point is always there. You're allowed to fail, but get back there. Yes. And and then the world is is your friend, man. You can do anything. The opportunities are unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that brings me obviously to what have been some of your biggest career highlights. Well, it's probably to multiple, you is but... one. <laughs> this is lovely. Um, yeah, I mentioned that um, that Boston, you know, being recognized for audience choice and the feedback that all the steps of the way have been career highlights in leveling up to the new place. Right now, I'm in a, a wonderful highlight spot new website released, um, products being recognized domestically, internationally, and also with the state of Connecticut to manufacture in USA, um, and another option in China. And um, so the highlights are really happening right now, the hard, hard work and the perseverance. And now I'm feeling um, at a level of success that this is a well run engine it's starting to be and this is this is going to get easier <laughs> yeah absolutely it's all just a process right <laughs> it is it's like getting up going across the room to grab coffee put cream in it i mean they're just small actions this is the same whatever you're trying to do just minimize it it might feel big for a moment catch your breath and then you say ah, you know, it's nothing. It's a pers it's just perspective. And like you said, it's just a process of steps. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. that obviously brings me to obviously COVID-19 turned our worlds upside down and inside out, yes. creating many challenges, but it also created so many opportunities. So can you please share with us how this impacted you both personally and professionally? And can you give us some examples of what and how you have adapted. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> from a business perspective, it has been terrific in I found that the world, my world has just slowed down and extended into the digital aspect much more efficiently. We yes. don't have to travel to places. I accomplished so much more through Zoom meetings instead of having to travel and make all of that effort. So we became efficient machines. And uh, the rest of the world joined my style of working from home, which is always been efficient. And it's a, a great discovery. Personally, I changed the way I go out in the world and the way I dress. I now wear these nice stylish leather gloves, <laughs> but I, and I wear these scarves just in case. And I think we should have, you know, with that nice distinction of respect of, space but that on the east coast we've always been pretty operational still our restaurants stayed open our places of business stayed open and we were just very um practical about it so um just having to be more protected i think is a has been a good thing um anytime i travel in a on a flight now i think we did need to preserve ourselves much better um, from contamination from each other. Mm. So I think we have become efficient, smarter, and cutting out all the nonsense of the excess, the, you know, just getting down. Yeah, to and, the and, and the consumerism, because I think that yeah. also 
played a very big role. And I think people have become way more conscious and aware. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. It's a dramatic fashion change, really, if you were to look at the mm -hmm. timeline from 1800s on to now, you know, mm -hmm. we are now in the leggings stage. <laughs> I love it. But it's yeah. just like a practicality that um, I don't think I'll ever abandon. I do wear normal pants, too. But if yeah. I can, I can have the choice. And that's a real transition. We don't wear trousers anymore. We wear synthetic stretch with side pockets for our telephones and that's it yeah. and um you know when you realize and then we, we're matching designer shoes or we're trying to make ourselves look but it's much more um natural look and it's a profound change in the last year or two years in fashion mm. absolutely so your surname is ukrainian and yeah. you come from an immigrant family so do you believe that this is what has pushed you and inspired you? And do you believe this is why immigrants do so well in the United States? Oh, yes, an interesting question, interesting mm -hmm. timing. Um, I've always had this stamina and I um, contributed to my grandmother, Ukrainian grandmother, Anastasia, and my dad, Joseph, for me to have this stamina and tenacity and um, a lot of my family does. and. I've never been able to explain it. And now the world sees Ukrainian people as they are with tenacity and strength and perseverance where the president picks up arms and babushkas pick up arms and everybody fights together. And that, that strength and unity is something I've always known. And so mm. now I simply have to say to people, oh, I'm a Ukrainian and they say, oh, okay, that explains a lot, which means that I will just keep going to, to my goals. And having recognized that uh, my grandfather left Ukraine at age 16, put on a boat by his family, headed to Canada to escape Russian persecution. As well, my grandmother, Anastasia, at age three with her family, mm. and here we are again, um, is absolutely heartbreaking. Mm. Um, but to answer your question about the immigrant mindset, and it certainly capitalizes in the United States, Canada, North America, is that filtering of the people who have the opportunity to, to escape. And then there's an extra drive in that immigrant mindset. And it really is mindset. So, um, yes, absolutely. An immigrant status, um, or or being on the other side of fear and having to push through it just makes us stronger and better yeah so i'm, I'm hopeful for uh for ukraine that's amazing yeah i mean it's, it's a very tragic situation unfortunately it's really hard to watch and also i guess it's hard because if you're not really there like on the ground you don't also really fully understand. I'm not saying you, but I'm saying like a lot of people sitting on the outside because there's a lot of varying opinions. But I think it's amazing what you've managed to achieve. So that obviously leads me to, as female founders, we are often faced with so many challenges. So how and what are you doing to help other female founders? And what are some of the most common mistakes women make? And what advice would you give to other women that could help them to reach their highest potential? Mm. Well, I think I'm in a position to help female founders now because I've been invited to a very interesting meeting with the state of Connecticut and they're going to be kind of exploring um, all kinds of aspects about manufacturing and progress in the state, but also how my situation fits in, in a way, how did you do it on your own for six or seven years without our help? And I'm able to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, how did I fall through the cracks? Did I, or how did other people do it if they don't have the funding that I managed to have um, through some small investments, you know? Um, so that's an interesting spot. I'm really, really looking forward to being able to say, I would be good for you guys to help us more um, uh, states and, 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 wherever you are within your region. And for women, I find one very, oh, many, many very um, important features that are worth knowing. Learn how to read body language, read micro expressions and small, subtle, 
so that you know what that person is about to say. You don't have to read just words. And it gives you an advantage. Um, for instance, if you're talking to somebody and their foot moves this way, you realize that their indication, they're done talking, they're ready to go. But they can be such small things like uh, uh, presenting one side of their face as they're considering it, and they'll turn and present the other side of the face when they agree with you. Small things like this, so it just keeps you adept at reading the world out there. Yes. Um, and in a world that is, um, you know, gender imbalanced and male dominated, sometimes been in a presentation room, there might be 40 men to three women in the business ratio. Men like to talk a lot less, so you have to be integrating into that short, mm. to the point. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's different. You have to be aware. I, I, of think, I think that is one of the mistakes that women do make, you know, as a female myself. I think that that's one of the biggest things is that women tend to go too much into detail. But like if you pitching or doing something in front of a panel of men or you're pitching for funding or whatever, it's like you say, you actually really just need to cut the fluff and get to the point. Very important. Um, read that men tend to speak on average in a day 5,000 words and women tend to speak more like 25,000 words. And wow. it's so lovely. <laughs> such a fun thing to do with our daughters and sisters and we can have yeah. such fun. Yeah. But um, on an evolutionary point of view, my, my beautiful cousin revealed this to me. Uh, where the hunters and gatherers, um, where yes. women being, you know, up collectors as if they have a basket of information on top of their head and they're collecting information because that network is giving them strength they want to know those details and talk to each other etc as they are gathering in this group whereas the males were the were focused independent silent in individual hunters because the hunting had to be usually one alone with the spear focal point. So I would remember what her words were. Um, think of the men as, as throwing a spear focus, boom. That's yeah. what they want to hear. Don't yeah. be the hunter gatherer no. of all this information <laughs> that women have. Yeah. And that helps because you instantly correct yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I became expert at talking to orthopedic surgeons. Sometimes I would be given 30 seconds and I had to deliver my message. And I did. Yes. My brain just revamped it. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. And they loved it. And it's yeah. so much better. So, so yeah, we do have to um, change. But if you're aware of it, it's easy to do, you know, yes. Absolutely. and better makes you more likable more listenable it's everything about it but um our strengths are showing our abilities are really recognized when i walk into that room too i'll say that i have felt the change in six years or so where uh, women are now more paid much more attention to revered recognizing in those strengths so i'm it's wonderful time i, I think it's a wonderful time to be a woman in business absolutely so that leads me to the final question. What are the three key pieces of advice you would give to other entrepreneurs and what legacy would you like to leave or how would you like to be remembered? Ooh, that's <laughs> a big one. Well, I'd say, oh, hang on to your laughter always because, the, you know, the things that you end up doing and, and, you know, just life in general, I'm constantly laughing at things <laughs> because why not? Yes. Um, you know, and always invest in yourself. Yes. Selfishly. Yes. Just do yes. it. Yes, yes, your children will be fine. Yes, they will get their needs met and they you will be giving all your all to them, your family. But meet your needs and take the discovery that is yours to take. Yeah. And um and step into that other side of fear. Everything we've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. So just yes. pass through it. Yeah. Turn off the emotion of that fear. And, and, and I think a third piece would be to recognize that feeling of fear that might stop somebody in their tracks, yet even though they might have a good chance of achieving what they were thinking, mm -hmm. but it stops them. So get used to that feeling. It's handy sometimes in a life or death situation, but this is not that. No. This is just, so don't 
listen to it, squash it, and go for it. Amazing. So what legacy would you like to leave or how would you like to be remembered? Oh, well, after this, I want to continue to solve some problems. I would, I'm very interested in, um, oh, there's an aspect of a uh, worker water towers in Africa, just using natural wicking of this type of tree to for condensation overnight, bringing rural villages 25 gallons overnight because it's so easy. Mm. <laughs> and women and children don't have to walk three miles to dirty watering holes daily and not being in school. Yes. There is, there is so much purpose and so many solutions. I would love to have an opportunity to look at something and help somewhere to, to solve if I can that yes. way. Yeah. And opening up to traveling soon again, the world is going to be, you know, settling down and, and not settling down. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely, yeah. <laughs> It's definitely a moving target at this point. <laughs> yep. we? I think I'm just going to go for it. I'm getting yeah. my passport updated. I know I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So being able to bring to the world um, some new ideas that support the mobility and health of people with innovative next generation solutions, mm. efficient and lean. Um, you know, we don't need the heavy metal weights and the time consuming trips to the gym. You can have these sleek tools that allow you um, to restore your mobility. Mm. And so that's, I think, a new direction. I think that would be valuable to contribute. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. So if people wish to connect with you, what are the best platforms well, this, to do so? Yes, this shiny new website. We've got anklestone.com. And it's wonderful at providing um, diagnostic tools and, and details so that you can find your diagnosis for plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, whatever the foot and ankle ailment might be, um, or your sports interest for um, specific targeted work and conditioning with ankle stone. Um, and of course, you can reach out to mzanik at zanese.com as well, but do visit the website. Thank you for asking. Thanks so much. And hopefully we can have you back in the future to see where you are in your journey. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you.